think I have to say this. Thank God it's Friday. But for me, it's not the end of the week. For me, it's always on a Sunday. And this is not the last day for my, for, for my webinar. I still have schedules, of course, for my school until Sunday. Nonetheless, today we'll be talking about um, a little light, lighter topic than the topics that we've been using, discussing this past few days. This time it's more of how we can uh, improve our online and offline lectures. Uh, when we talk about online and offline lectures, we're talking about the perspective of distance education. So this is not offline education that is um, traditional lecturing where there's face-to-face -face interaction because there are too many definitions of offline lectures. Uh, the perspective in the context of offline lecture here is more of uh, no connectivity connection or no connectivity uh, lectures. This would be more of the, the things that we uh, of, asyn of asynchronous uh, delivery of our lectures that are recorded, pre-recorded for our students and uh, they can access that at home without any connection at all. So these are probably sent off to the students uh, via a CD form or via a flash drive. Okay, on that note, I don't want to, to, to give too much talk about this. I will just go directly, embark on our topic because I still have a, a scheduled meeting at around uh, four o'clock and I have, I'll, I'm the host, so I'll be online at 3.30. So I need to finish uh, at least probably five minutes before 3.30, so on we go. Oh, wait, screen share. I forgot how to traverse over Zoom. Oh, here we are. I'm relearning again. For the past few days, I've been using uh, Microsoft Team and Google Meet, and it was, it's mind-boggling in the sense that I move from one application to another, and uh, I seem to forget that I'm using a new uh, application. Those are technical considerations that we need to think about. All right, so my topic for this afternoon is um, preparing online and offline lectures. And then that should be taking in techni technical considerations in striking a balance between traditional and technology enhanced learning deliveries. And uh, I would like to focus more on that. Um, I would like to focus more on takeaways on how we can make our lectures online and offline more active in its perspective. And I'll be suggesting ways uh, how we can improve our lectures that it becomes more interactive, more interesting to our students and um, not boring. And I would like to also uh, share to you how the, importance, uh, the importance and the crucial role that teacher lectures play in the learning and uh, the teaching and learning process of our students, not only during face-to-face -face interaction, but most importantly, during this uh, distance education, all right? So um, I think you already know my, my flow. This is already the last day of the week where I'm going to have a delivery, this such delivery. And by next week, I would like you to be surprised of what I'm gonna prepare uh, and what I'm gonna, how I'm going to present my presentations next week. And I'm kind of excited, but at the same time, um, scared a little because I'll be integrating a little bit of theater arts and acting into it. So to make, you know, things a little bit different from the previous months of my presentation, nonetheless, it will not be, my presentation and my input will not be diminished by such designs and such uh, way of delivery. So it would just, you know, make it more interesting and more lively and interactive. Uh, that's how I hope it to be. All right, so let's begin with my introduction. Talk about uh, trying to finish on time. All right, um, I already timed myself so that at least, you know, my mouth would stop talking and just, you know, deliver. Uh, come on, just go. So to, let's just focus on introduction and let's identify and bust myths about offline and online lectures. And these are the three common uh, statements that I've gathered uh, online that are uh, commonly, commonly stated by both teachers and students alike. And we're going to bust them as we go through. Uh, we're gonna bust them first, and then we're going to explain why they are busted as we go through our topic for this afternoon. All right, 
So let's begin with statement number one. Okay, it says here flipping your class means getting rid of lecturing. They said, uh, yes, uh, it's common trend. Oh God, I bit my my cheek, my inner cheek. That hurt a lot. And del del kasi ni Michi. Oh, sorry. And uh, lang kasi may kaaway palagi. Flipping your class means getting rid of lecturing. Okay. Um, flipping classrooms or flipped classrooms are quite common right now as one of the designs of distance education. And it makes a lot of our students become more uh, independent and more self-disciplined in their approach to their, to their learning. But I would say that it requires a lot of, of, of participation at home by the primary caregivers and our students. And those students who are still struggling with, while they were still with face-to-face -face interaction last year with their teachers and had difficulty and were struggling with cooperative learning, I think they will struggle so much with um, solitary learning if, if they have not been trained uh, and have not been raised to be highly independent learners with self-discipline. Guess this is going to be a huge problem for our students. Therefore, statement number one will be your classmates getting rid of lecture. And definitely not. Lecture or teacher input will always be an integral part in any type of learning. It, it's either given as an offline method or an online method, a synchronous method, modular method. The point here is that the teacher will always have an input. Uh, one way or the other. It could be in a form of quizzes, it could be a form of recitation, it could be a form of activity sheets. Nonetheless, all of these are teacher preparations and teacher input. Hence, there will always be room for teacher lecture where our students will be indirectly or directly interacting with students and it cannot be replaced by any type of gadget or by any type of, of type of uh, approach into, into the teaching and learning process. I do believe that there's a huge, uh, huge uh, uh, positive, positive effect of the teacher as a model of learning and as a model of, of, of how the skills should be taught and how, should, how the skills are, are worked at play. And, and the teachers are the one modeling that to the students. And uh, by that, I believe that the teacher is the key element in the teaching and teaching and learning process, and therefore lecture is cannot be you cannot get rid of that. And before I proceed, and before boss this, I would like to say uh, a, a month long uh, te World Teachers Teachers Month celebration celebration to all of us. And I believe uh, Vibal uh, has prepared a lot of, of, of webinar trainings. In, in respect and in to, to give uh, respect and to put the teachers at a pedestal for this month and to give importance to the role, pivotal role or pivotal role in the educational system, okay? I'm a teacher, so I'm happy that it's it's uh, World Teachers Month celebration. And with that also, it's our celebration for, for those Catholics out there, uh, it's our Holy Rosary Month. So, all right. On that note, statement number one, we can never get rid of lecturing because teacher input is and will always be important in the teaching learning process. Therefore, together we say is busted. Wala pa akong tulog neto, pero kinuman energy nyo. Thank God for the coffee for that. Baka next coffee, pwede naman. Baka lang, baka lang pwede nyo kong kuning. Model. Model. Statement number two, still one of those uh, ways of getting rid of lecture. They said that flip classroom would get rid of teacher lecture. I beg to disagree. Statement number two says that, it states that flipping your class will require lots of technical knowledge. Mm. It depends on the flip, the design of the flip classroom, how you're going to deliver your lecture. It could be in a form of module. If it's the form of module, I think a lot of teachers are already well versed especially in making modules and making handouts and making uh, activity sheets. So a lot of teachers will not necessarily have to go beyond the technical knowledge that they have, unless they would like to uh, uh, enliven in and to improve their delivery of their lectures. It could be now online. It could also be in a form of pre-recorded video. Nonetheless, 
they just need the cell phones. And I think a lot of teachers already know how to use their uh, voice recording. I, I've been doing my voice recording here for the stories that I send to my pamangkin and to some of the kids that uh, I said that I'm going to create stories for them. And I do story pre-recorded storytelling. And these are forms of lectures to, to, um, to help kids learn how to read. And at the same time, our teachers out there have their own gadgets that would help them uh, 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 come up with better forms of lectures. And cell phones are very handy. And I believe a lot of teachers also have their own uh, iPads and all other gadgets that would help them. Uh, applications are already embedded, I suppose, in your, app, in your cell phones. And therefore, uh, we've been doing, you've been using gadgets and digital uh, applications for the past few years. And I believe it would not require a lot. We don't have to be professional like the broadcasting, a big broadcasting uh, agencies in, in the Philippines that it has to be full film, full video that we, we create of. It could be like TED Talk, spontaneous way of del delivering speech and let's ask our friends to, to record that. Therefore, I believe that flip classroom does not really require technical knowledge. It's just require uh, creativity. On that note, we would say that statement number two, Philippine class will require lots of technical knowledge from our teachers is busted. All right. I, I don't know if this is going to be the last, last day for me busting myths, but definitely for October, I'm not going to use busting myths anymore. I'm going to be doing something different. You may see me singing every now and then. Not dance, perhaps, but anyway. So today I'm going to relish my busting of myths because this is going to be the last day of, of my way of delivering my introduction. So third statement and last statement says, students will not like the flip class and your teaching evaluations will suffer. A lot of teachers wouldn't want to do a flip classroom like advanced readings or providing students with pre-recorded videos, pre -recorded pre-recorded lectures so that students can advance, uh, uh, re read, learn in advance all of these materials before they do online lectures, online discussions, uh, believing that students will not act, will not necessarily open these materials or, uh, or, or learn, this, learn from these materials, or it will give, uh, give teachers uh, the picture that they are a lazy teacher because they're making students do the job of, of learning. I get this is not because flip classroom is still there's a lecture only that it gives a different perspective how lecture should be provided to our students it becomes more an active perspective of lecture and, and allowing students to find their own time and at the same time develop the sense of responsibility that if they do not do this if they do not review this this uh, pre-recorded videos or pre-recorded lectures or handouts that the teachers uh, provided for them before an online uh, discussion or lecture. I believe that's their own look lookout. And by and by, if the teacher becomes consistent with the use of the flipped classroom, parents and students alike will see that in reality, <coughs> sorry, that in reality, the bulk of the responsibility in the learning process of our students must be from the students, not the teachers. Unlike in the traditional way of lecturing, uh, most of the preparation, the lecturing, the delivery of the lesson, and then making sure that the students are able to understand the lessons, uh, I think would say 70% would come from the teacher, but with the, with the distance education right now, uh, parents and students are facing the reality that, hey, the responsibility of learning is actually mine. The job of my teachers is more of to prepare materials for me to read, for me to learn from, but I will still have to force myself to motivate myself in order to, to open these materials and learn from it. And if I don't do that, who's gonna do it for me? And that's a good realization for our students and for our parents. And I believe that Flea Classroom with a different uh, twist in the use of teacher lecture would definitely make our students more independent, if not self-disciplined 
in this school year if we could only be just consistent with the use of lectures. And that's what we're gonna uh, discuss in a few, just few minutes though. I'm not gonna eat a lot, a lot of your time, so please stay with me. And uh, this is gonna be the last time I'm gonna use this kind of way of delivering my, my goods. So together, statement number three that says, students will not li like the flip class and your teaching evaluations will suffer is definitely busted. It's a myth. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is a myth. And we're not going to discuss that. And it should not be seen as something that would diminish the professional picture of our teachers. Making our students read in advance, do reports, make research, do research. Uh, 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 these are responsibilities of a good learner. And uh, I hope parents you realize that. Okay. So let's proceed to a published article uh, saying the importance of lecture, of, of lectures, be it online or offline, in the teaching and learning process. So um, I think a lot of teachers, I think people out there would like you to um, force yourself, give yourself time to at least, if not, if you don't have subscription for journals. If you don't have, there are online journals that you can subscribe on, but I know that it's a little bit expensive and, and the kind of life that we have right now with the pandemic would you know, take its toll on our budget. But um, there are free online articles that you can read. And um, I'm, I'm speaking from personal experience that it helps me a lot to, to redirect my thoughts and to refine my thoughts and to to embark on things that I think are worthwhile as a, a professional educator, and at the same time as a religious brother, uh, as a brother, Ooh. and um, by reading, going online, let's use online platforms positively and learn from it. And and there are a lot of articles that we can read that can you know make things better for us as teachers and understand how, understand our roles as teachers and at the same time understand how we can help our students become more, uh, more independent and more holistic in their approach to their learning. So this is one of the articles that I, uh, I, I got, uh, I, I stumbled into and I was surprised of the way, of the, the way lecture was treated and um, I'm happy for that. I'm not saying that I, I have the same idea. It's just that um, I can always say that no matter what we say, there will be no replacement for the teacher as the key element in the teaching and learning process. Otherwise, it wouldn't be called teaching and learning process. It's just, you know, learning process uh, uh, all in all. So let's read. Uh, if you want to read the whole article and um, and go through the details of it, uh, it's entitled Making Lectures More Active, Center for Teacher and Learning. Retrieve from this, the, 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 that's the URL. But this is the article. Okay. <clears throat> Let me just, you know, get a sip of my coffee. Mas tumakas po ang ating energy. Tapang commercial yun. The lecture is a long-standing method of instruction that, while appropriate to some learning situation, is not ideal in others. On this page, you will find information about strengths and weaknesses, lecturing, as well as active learning techniques that you can easily use to engage students during a lecture, All right? It says also that lectures are the major teaching Hey. Okay, lectures are the major uh, lectures are the major teaching method employed in many academic departments and schools. As you reflect on how best to prepare and deliver lectures, keep in mind that the primary goal should be to foster critical thinking and active learning. That means that um, it's not just lecturing; it is also making sure that when we lecture, uh, we we it's an active way of doing and delivering information to our students and making them develop and think critically of this information that we provide them with, all right? It's just one way of doing that. It's not just, you know, not a, lot, a lot of teachers right now are just, you know, hooked up with this, I just need to finish this. And, and I don't care if 
not necessarily I don't care. It's just I need to finish the curriculum. And if I'm able to finish the curriculum, that I would say I was able to make my students learn. It's not how many learning competences you have finished, but it's, 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 it's actually on how our students have acquired uh, the learning competences and the skills and the knowledge that uh, we desire them to acquire or to have. Consequently, lecturers should resist, okay? Should resist the temptation to make lectures, lectures more entertaining by overusing visual aids. There are a lot of teachers who, who, who use a lot of visual aids. I'm not saying that I'm the kind of person of visual aids. I, I strike a balance between pictures and words and, and my explanation. And I think the bulk of lectures would be on teacher explanation and the visual aids are there for aid to support the teacher's lecture. But what happens with other teachers is that um, the visual aids like videos and pictures, um, not that I'm saying that they, do, they are not connected to what the teacher is trying to say or what the, what the teacher is trying to lecture on. It's just that it, it distracts the attention of our students uh, to listen to the teacher's lecture, okay? Since lectures are primary oral, oral, the visual material should generally be appropriate for recording in lecture notes, which usually means simple summary diagram. In general, lectures should aim to be enjoyable, but should not strive to be entertaining as the major goal because lectures should be memorable rather than diverting. So the visual aids that we use as lecturers should support what we would like to convey to our listeners. And this is what I'm doing. Uh, my visual aids, my powerful presentation only guides me of what I'm going to say to you guys out there. And there's a lot of things that come out of my mouth. It's not like the way we do that some teachers would do that everything they say is on the PowerPoint presentation or in visual aids. And I, what I could say is that I think the teacher should not talk anymore and we, sh we should allow the, the, <clears throat> the students to just read what's written on the blackboard or what's written on the manila paper or what's written on the uh, PowerPoint presentation. So the migration of the information from traditional approach of lecture to a more technology, technology enhanced delivery of lectures have not changed because it still is highly verbal, okay? Also, the, the article uh, summarizes that in a nutshell, lectures retain a major educational role because they exploit evolved aspects of human nature to make learning easier and more effective when compared with electronic and literacy-based media. In a sense that with the presence of the teacher, the teacher is able to, to digest the information and re-decode re it, represent it to the students in such a way that it's within their appropriate level and is easily understandable. On that note, the article also says, and as a university teaching continues to expand, it is important to make learning as easy as possible because yes, because I was, when I was a, a professor at the Philippine Normal, Normal University, I learned the mantra that the best teacher is the best teacher who affects learning and makes difficult lessons, difficult concepts, understandable, but at the same time, enjoyable to the learners. If we are able to do that, then I think we have, because uh, uh, if, if, if our learners see fun in what they are learning, then I think they will be engaged actively in listening to us as we lecture, all right? And instead of trying to face out lectures, we should strive to make them better, okay? So, dapat po yung mga tao dyan na sinasabi na, huwag na, huwag na magsalita sa teacher, importante pa rin po ang lecture talaga, okay? Modeling is very important. To do this entails understanding how lectures exploit human psychology, especially the fact that lectures are essentially formal, spoken and social events, spoken and social events. It, it helps our students see that uh, this inform how information can be delivered in human language and in many ways that it, in many ways, uh, in many ways how it can be delivered or and, and how this information can be delivered in 
various ways. Yun, umukay na nga kayong statement. Now, this article challenges us, okay, this article about Letcher challenges us that instead of thinking of approaches and pedagogical approaches that phases out the role of the teacher as a lecturer, we should not, we should stop doing that. We should stop from, you know, thinking of an application, online application of platforms that, 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 that uh, replaces the teacher. What we should do is think of how we can help our teachers with the use of this technology improve the delivery of the lectures, not, may, not replace the teacher. The teacher is there is to motivate the voice of the teacher, the face of the teacher, and the passion of the teacher is, 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 is very affectionate and, and, it, and, and it influences and motivates students who listen to the teacher, the passion and, and, and the commitment and, and the, the, the compassion of the teacher, once seen by the students, they will feel and motivate it externally to be more active in the learning process. And dami kong sinabi, no? but that's what the article is trying to say. And I'm so, I don't know, I'm probably I'm a very um, voracious reader, addict. Ang tawag nga sa akin ay addict po sa pagbabasa. Uh, you will learn a lot. And, and I'm happy that there are a lot of, of, of experts out there that are doing research on improving improving the lecture type, the lecture type uh, of methodology and approach to delivering uh, delivering lessons to our students. And what I'm doing right now is lecture. It's just that it's more of an online online kind of lecture and I'm combining many elements and that's what we're going to discuss a little bit in, in, in a while. So let's start our discussion and I've ate up already about 30 minutes of my time. All right, let's go for question number one. And question number one is what is online and offline lectures? Okay. So offline lecture is simply as in distance learning, offline lecture is a mode of delivery that does not require online participation. These are our online participation or does not require students to be logged on or logged in uh, a certain online platform for them to listen to the teacher as he delivers or as she delivers the, the information to the students one way or the other. It could be created delivery, it could be a traditional way delivery, it's online, nonetheless, uh, in, in, in offline, the materials are delivered to the students individually and they don't need connectivity, connectivity in, in accessing the information. So I think this is one of the solutions, I suppose this is one of the solutions for, for, for teachers, for students who have, students who have gadgets at home have laptops at home, have computers at home, but have problems with connectivity. And I, and I think we have to um, admit, we need to admit the reality right now that um, because of too many people accessing uh, online, online uh, connectivity, Wi-Fi connection, uh, I'm not gonna mention what, what, what institution is in your, your you are connecting with for your Wi-Fi. The point there is that as many people, as many students and many families are connecting, they're not just students, but also those who are connecting. Uh, by and by, we will have problems, uh, problems with connection. So I think a lot of schools and a lot of, of teachers should also consider offline lectures uh, and offline learning. These are ways of recording. We record materials like the lectures. So, nire-record ni teacher lahat ang mga nakalagay sa module. Nire-record niya, uh, kagaya nito. Tapos, ipapadala sa, sa mga magulang o sa mga teacher. Sa, na, oh, ito, for this week, ito mga, for this week, ito ang mga lectures na kailangan nilang panoorin. Tapos, ano ang page niya sa module na nagsusupport. O kaya, pwede naman pong isang pagay sa ALS, pwede naman pong isang linggo, isang buwan, pwede pong ganun. The, what's good about offline is that binibigay mo lahat ang materyales sa pamilya, binibigay mo sa kanilang schedule, tapos sila ngayon ang may responsibilidad na tusundin man nila o hindi. Papasok po dito ang sinasabi natin na, na uh, discipline, are they disciplined enough? Are the parents motivated enough to help their kids, support their kids uh, in the offline learning? 
Kasi pag online kasi at may connection sila, still, there's still a, a little bit of percentage of reliance on the teacher. But because there's now problems with connectivity, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna say thank God for this problem. And it makes the parents uh, realize that they have to be more active in the partic- in partic- in more active in their involvement in their kids' learning. So offline lectures would be a good solution to those families, to their uh, to, to kids with families and uh, who have gadgets, access to gadgets but have problems with connectivity. This could be delivered through ayun pala, dalawa ng dalgaturan ng pala na sinulat ko pala. This could be delivered through learning modules, pre-recorded lectures, videos, audio files or any combinations of this. So ibig sabihin po, sa ibig sabihin po niyan, hindi po ito ang mga lectures na ina-upload po namin sa Facebook, sa YouTube. No, they, those are not co- called offline lectures. They are called online lectures because you, the the students will still need internet connection or connectivity for them to access those. Pag sinabi po natin offline lecture, hindi po kailangan i-upload. Ito po ay pinapadala via say a CD or via flash drive to the students. Tapos with with that, yung materials na yun, so naka-flash drive, merong, merong siguro plastic cover, plastic folder, plastic envelope, nakalagay din yung mga activity sheets, tapos may schedule, tapos nandun ng USB, tapos yung USB naka-schedule na kung ano yung mga anong anong schedule ng pagkakasunod-sunod ng mga lectures or videos na si teacher ang gumawa tapos siya ang panonoorin ng mga bata it's either mga activity sheet muna siya tapos panonoorin po yung nakalagay sa USB or manonood muna siya sa bubuksan niyo muna ang file doon sa flash drive tapos um gagawin niya activity one with the other no matter how you use the flipping of it it still is it boils down to the idea that the materials will be prepared by the will be prepared by the teacher and then it will be given to the students and the parents and the parents will have to follow the schedule and we and 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 make the students more uh independent and and learn time management and follow directions and follow schedule para sa akin maganda po yung offline lecture kasi uh, it does not only uh, it does not only make our students realize and our parents more active in the learning process of our students, but also addresses our problem in the Philippines about the connectivity. It also helps our teachers that they need to prepare all the materials in advance. And then sinagawa po niya the whole month, medyo na siya, na, medyo makakahinga na siya ng konti, dahan-dahan na siya mag-prepare for the next month ulit, kung ganun po ang gagawin ninyo. Ngayon kung every week po niyo gagawin, so may, ah, ganun pa rin po, you'll be preparing your materials this week, for next week, oh, okay pa rin po yun. Nonetheless, hindi po nakastress kay teacher na, naku, araw-araw may let's show, bukas na naman, bukas na parang every night walang tulog. So, offline addresses, it, it makes every, everyone happy. But then again, I'm not saying it should be totally offline. Mas maganda pa rin na at least once or twice a week meron lecture po, online lecture, online lecture si teacher para nagkakaroon po na, nakikita po ng mga bata in real time ang kanilang teacher na nagsasalita. Although nakita nila sa video nagsasalita si teacher pero there's a difference between the feeling na nangyayari ito ngayon kasama ako ako ngayon ito nakikita kasama siya hindi yung recorded lang to eh pwede pong i-stop and time lang. Yung online kasi pag dire-diretso na hindi niya kaya kailangan siya mag mag-discipline na yun ng sarili na makinig talaga. So I would say a combination of both but we cannot uh, 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 discount the discount the, the the importance of having offline lecture as one of the elements of distance education. Doon pa lang, ano, dami ko nang sinabi. Now, online lecture, online lecture, on the other hand, is an online lecture as an educational class that is held online. Kaya nga online, kasi online siya. So, ibig sabihin kailangan connectivity, connectivity. All right? An online lecture refers to a lecture delivered virtually as opposed to in person. Online lectures may be asynchronous, in that students can watch a lecture at their own pace. Other online lectures may be synchronous, meaning naka-upload lang po siya sa Facebook or sa YouTube, tapos they can access it anytime, uh, anytime that they have connections uh, or based on their schedule. But still, it's, it's online. Ibig sabihin na kailangan po ng uh, connectivity. In short po, actually, ibig sabihin pala, sir, 
pwede pong yung ni-record, pre-recorded lecture po ng teacher i- i-upload po niya sa Facebook of Facebook group po ng klase nila o kaya sa online platforms. Yes, that those are called online lectures too. But again, paano nga? Kaya nga, we are trying to introduce offline lecture here. Now, there's a huge possibility that your that their children have access. Kasi, guys, let's be realistic. Habang tumatagal, lalaki ang gastos po ng mga magulang at saka ng mga bata for online, kung maging puro tayo online, puro online, puro online. So, I, kaya maniniwala po ako na, at, at we have also to consider that mas mahirap ang buhay ngayon kesa sa dati. Kasi nga, mahirap ang trabaho. Okay? So, we have also to think of na, na paano ko yung gagawin ko na malilesen ang expenses ng family at saka ng sudyante sa connectivity. Kung, kung mobile data ang gagamitin nila for connectivity, so, Mahirap nun. Milang subjects yun. So, how, the best way to do that is combine offline and online lectures. Question number two. I hope you, I satisfied, uh, my, uh, you're satisfied with my answering question number one. Uh, the definition. It's just more of a definition of what's offline and online. Again, I would like to to, to uh, emphasize that the offline lecture that I'm talking about here is still within the perspective of distance education, okay? An offline lecture is simply put that it does not require connectivity. So, meron din pre-required video on online, kaya lang kailangan pa rin siyang naka-upload siya, asynchronous, pwede nga asynchronous, pwede synchronous, pero naka-upload po siya, so kailangan pa rin po siyang ng connectivity. So, kailangan ng gastos. Technical-wise, kailangan ng technical know-how ng teacher how to upload that, especially for videos, paano niya i-convert ang kanyang lectures into video format and other things. Right? So, let's proceed to question number two. <clears throat> Inumla ko naman din. They say, a way to enjoy your coffee is sip it, not gulp it. All right. What are the second question is, we only have four questions though, so we're almost halfway through. Uh, question number two, what are the advantages and disadvantages of offline letters? So I would like to be honest uh, as to what research, what research uh, say about the advantages and disadvantages of offline. So at least uh, you teachers out there can uh, can gauge um, which of this or the combinations of this would you want to come up with as you go along with your preparation. Kasi nga, ang inisip ko sa dito is mas paganda may combination kayo ng offline at online para makabawas po sa inyong hira. Kasi demanding po kasi talaga ang online. It's very time demanding preparation wise. And... Um, Oh, well, I'm doing always online online lectures. It's really demanding. I enjoy it, but uh, at the end of the day, it's mentally ex- yun yun. It's not physically exhausting. It's more more. It's more of mentally exhausting. It makes a lot of teachers think of a way how we can present information in such a way that it becomes more entertaining, enjoyable, and interactive for students. Naging British na ako, kulang na sa tulog. All right, let's have, the answer. let's have the answer to the questions. Question number two, the advantages and disadvantages of offline lectures. So lectures are good for, offline lectures are good for presenting current information and summarizing material. So maganda po siyang i-present ang offline material dahil pwede po siyang ibigay sa mga bata like a trivia. Now, okay, trivia like before... They, they engage in their module to say, okay, watch this please. first, this video about the trivia, about science, about, say, properties of matter, or kaya uh, mitigating, uh, mitigating uh, environmental issues. Uh, so let's have uh, uh, a trivia about Philippine, Philippine uh, environmental issues since 1970s on garbage disposal problem. Okay? So, mga ganun siya. Uh, so, mga current, kahit pa siya current kasi nga uh, uh, still uh, prevalent as a problem. So, ibibigay sa mga bata and then it will be more of um, of their of their context 
as to how they are going to understand the information they're going to read in their module. Or it could be presented as summarizing material. Like after reading the module, meron silang i-open na material na video na binigay sa kanila offline. Then they're gonna watch how the teacher explains the, the module and summarizes everything. Still good. That's still good. Okay? Ibig sabihin, nakatulong siya as support to the independent module learning for our students. Next, focusing material on a focusing material on a particular area of interest. What's good about lecture, offline lecture, is that the teacher can just create lectures before or after the module use, uh, particularly for just one purpose. Talagang ano siya, talagang very focused. Unlike with the online lectures that I'm doing right now, um, kailangan ko mahit lahat ng mga questions, that lahat ng learning, uh, the, the learning objectives, so the, the, the webinar objectives that I need to deliver. So unlike for lectures, offline lectures, pwede po siyang pag-isa lang parang preliminary activity, pwede siyang during activity or developmental activity. It could be uh, after activity. But for online, we need to consider 50% of that area of learning, at least 50%. And then um, unless we combine it with uh, offline lectures. Nonetheless, uh, I could say that this one is a very good support to modular learning. Next, relaying key concepts, principles, or ideas via lectures. I think, uh, uh, kasi dahil nga offline siya, pwede siyang balik-balikan ng bata. So nakatulong siya na maintindihan ng bata, especially when the information are highly theoretical, highly principle-based, highly abstract ideas. So pwede yung paulit-ulit. Unlike for online lectures, mahirapan po ang bata na balik-balikan kasi once done, done na po siya. All right? Unless mayroong recording element. Sabi ng teacher, i-record ko naman to uh, kasi baka mga bata hindi nila nasundan. Eh, nag-online ka pa. Diba? Eh, di sana dinesign mo na ay, itong mga lesson, itong lesson na to medyo mahirap ito. So, gagawin ko siyang offline lecture kasama siya sa offline lecture sa materials na ipapagdala sa mga bata in advance. Hmm. Alright. Kaya yung teacher nakakalam kung ano mga konserta na, na mahirap. O, huwag mong i-online kasi mahirap ng bata sun nasundan ka. Next, building interest. Kasi nga, na, uh, uh, iba kasi din ang nakikita ng habang inaaral niya modules, iba rin po kasi na nakikita niya o narinig niya ang boses ng teacher. So it, it helps a little way, a way na feeling ng bata na kahit nag-aaral sa bahay na parang andito lang si teacher din. Parang guni-guni ko si teacher. Joke lang yung guni-guni niya. Parang nararamdaman ko si teacher. Parang I see ghosts. Joke. Uh, namatay na agad ang joke ko ngayon. Okay, just now. Kasi sasabi ko lang ng joke ko, patay agad. Wala na yung career ko sa pagiging uh, comedian. Anyway, uh, bosses pa lang ng teacher. This is, this is on the idea that our teachers utilize verbal elements and nonverbal elements, the voice, the facial expression in, 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 in eliciting the interest of our students. Pero kung, nagba, kung, kung si teacher nagle-lecture, pre-recorded siya, pero pag nagsalita lang, today we're going to talk about the different cycles of the, cycles of the moon. The first cycle of the moon, ang ganda ng pronunciation, pero si teacher parang matutulog na para naghihelin ng mga bata. Then it's not. It has to be more, more real, like a real kind of conversation that's recorded. Now, what's not good about offline lecture is fostering active learning. Yun lang. Uh, it's good for support, but it does not support active learning. Kasi nga, it hits either preparation hits during or after but not all. Ang online, pwede pa kasi maka-foster ng active learning kasi the teacher engages them and the students are actively, mentally, and emotionally engaged at a certain time of the day. Uh, unlike for certain, for, for, no, pwede kasi ang gawin ng bata na panoorin ko lang siya para lang nanonood ng TV para lang makatulog. Manonood lang ng TV. Something like that. It, there's a possibility of of, of not fostering, okay, not fostering active learning and not simulating higher or, order thinking skills because nga, uh, it's highly focused and highly uh, supportive of some of the elements of the modules. All right. Next, engaging learners. There's a difficulty of engaging learners because uh, the idea that it's already recorded so, sa utak ng bata, parang hinahirapan siya makikaka-interact with teacher. Unlike for online, pag, uh, uh, para pang, yun nga, as what's good about online too, 
is that nakakausap mo. Kagaya nito, pag nakausap ko kayo, at ako din, pag nag-deliver kasi ng, ng live, kasi pag nag-record lang ako, I'm very, when I'm recording, ganito pa nangyari sa akin, when I'm recording a, a lecture, I'm more aware of, I'm more aware of my errors and my mistakes in my delivery. Unlike when I do live lectures, my ideas and my language and my vocabulary is spontaneous and ex- spontaneous that it comes it comes out naturally and 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 a lot of comments fr- comments um, a lot of a lot uh, a lot of comments from those view viewers you viewers are, are telling me like that's what our students feel during online on offline lectures that that feeling is diminished because students know that it's not live and the teacher has pre-recorded it. Sabi niya, ah, rehearsed yun. Unless magaling si teacher umarte. But alas, our teachers not all are, uh, alas, not all our teachers are actors and uh, are male actors and female actors. That hurts a lot. Hmm. Okay, next. Developing learner skills. Um... Nahirapan ang bata. One of the comments and during offline lecture is that some of the students since um, uh, students have problems with how teachers uh, naturally are able to demonstrate the skills. Uh, it's not hindi na kasi hindi na kapag interact ang bata sa mga tanong nila. So in terms of skills, may mga meron mga pagkakataon na may hindi na intindihan ang bata since it's recorded. Hindi niya matatanong si teacher. So, yun po isa sa mga limitasyon ng offline lecture. Pero, kung nagawa po ni teacher ang offline, ito po masasabi ko, kung ang teacher po ay nakagawa ng offline lecture na ang ginawa po niya ay considering most of most most commonly asked questions by students, ini-consider na yun, I think malilimit na, malilimit na yung, ano, yung element ng not developing uh, learner skills. Kaya lang it will take a lot of research, a lot of, of survey of interest of our students survey of students' questions. So, a lot of preparation still. Next, exploring student attitudes or values. Simple. Uh, sa recorded kasi, ma-record mo siya, ma-deliver mo lang siya. So, hindi mo makikita kung how the students interact with the other students, how the students interact with you, how they ask questions. And on online, nalalaman ng teacher kung paano, ano ang natutunan ng bata, ang inisip ng bata. Kasi nga, the way they respond to you, either iconic language or via uh, video or via the microphone, the point is, uh, we're able to take note of changes of the students' attitudes. Unlike if it's offline, again, alam nga ng bata, na recorded lang. So sometimes it gets boring. So wag lang puro off lectures. I'm not saying that's why I'm saying I'm I'm not saying that's all off. I'm saying st- let us strike a balance between ang topic ko kanina yung aking subtitle striking a balance. Okay, striking a balance between traditional and technology enhanced lectures like online lectures. Okay? So let's proceed to question number 3. Wow, we are now almost at the a second to the last question and I only have 15 minutes 15 minutes before 3 o'clock. So don't worry. I'm halfway through. Halfway through pa lang. Third question. What are the advantages and disadvantages of online? Now we're done with the technicalities, some of the technical te- uh, technical advantages and disadvantages of offline lectures. Let's not discuss honestly what research says about the advantages, technical advantages, knowledge-based at disadvantages and advantages of online lectures. <clears throat> so these are the advantages of online lectures. One, these are convenient and flexible on both students and teachers. Okay. Naging convenient siya, the convenient siya, well, for those who have connectivity, right? It becomes convenient and flexible because It makes the students and teachers feel that they are in a classroom, in a learning environment, and the teachers are able to allow students to respond back to the to teachers in different in in different creative ways. It could be an iconic language. I already talked about iconic language use, and then it could also be via verbal. It could also be via 
facial expressions like you know, uh, via the the camera kasi kita ng teacher and laughing ito and it becomes more flexible because the teacher has to forget being so strict kasi nga dapat dapat uh, medyo uh, low affected filter ang ating uh, online lectures masaya pa rin okay it becomes convenient because students don't have to travel to school to be with the teacher travel time is lessened hindi naman nga lesson eh pwedeng gawin nga lang nga five minutes preparation ready na siya ang bata sa pagamit minsan nga pang taas na lang nga handa nila tapos they're ready for class very convenient next lecture are delivered right to the homes and provide individual learner attention so um sa face to face kasi sa face to face interaction uh the teacher gives the lecture to all students but with the online dahil nga ang bata ang tingin niya oh at tapos si teacher nandoon there's a feeling of 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 having an inter a personal interaction with the teacher in a one on one kasi hindi niya kasama mga teacher ang mga ang mga student and then while the teacher is looking in the camera the student feels like nakatingin sa kanya si teacher and like in a face to face interaction in a classroom uh some teachers just you know Uh, one way or the other looks at one student to another. It's hard to really be one-on-one with all of them. It's hard to be eye-to-eye contact with all of them. Student. But with online, uh, uh, there's na, an illusion that the teacher is directly talking to the individual uh, students, individual viewers, and individual participants. That's the good illusion of having online online lectures okay and it's directly delivered to the homes they don't have again as i've said they don't have to travel and they don't have to prepare so in terms of uh, finances nabawasan po ang gastos ng pamilya right? so instead na mapunta doon sa sa transportation dagdag na siguro yung pag pagbayad sa connectivity magkano ba ngayon ang connectivity uh 1,002 or 1,9, 2,000 para sa PLDT, I suppose. Uh, depende po siguro. Akin lang ay 1 lang po, 1,2 lang. Ata, sabi nila. Now, next, we have integrates academic skills with digital and world skills. And what's good about online is that ang tinuturo ni teacher, si teacher is now forced to make, to think of how to use to use digital uh, digital input in the online lecture so one way or the other students are able to see how how this information can be digitally formatted or digitally digitally uh, presented in a way modeling to the students that information academic information academic skills can be transferred uh, and and can be uh, transitioned to digital platforms yun din nakakagandahan unlike before sa face to face interaction parang Uh, extension na lang siya. Kung may time pa, sige, extend natin para puntang digital. But this time, because of online lectures, because of distance education, all teachers are now required and now are, 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 are forced. I think I have to use the word forced kasi nga, it's not a choice. Are forced to uh, deliver academic information, uh, the, the standards, the learning competencies with the integration of digital platforms and digital uh, digital uh, applications so kitang kita gad ang kitang kita gad ang integration sa mga bata kitang kita gad ng mga bata ano ba mamali na kay order ng sense statement kitang kita gad ng mga bata ang integration academic input with digital uh, applications and platforms <clears throat> and finally The fourth advantage of uh, online lectures will promote independent learning and self-discipline. Wala nga naman choice ang mga bata at mga magulang kung hindi talagang maging independent sila kasi nga they're on their own. Uh, even if there's collaborative effort, it will still require students to do certain amount of study, a certain, certain amount of understanding and trying to learn from the materials provided for, for them, be it offline and online. So still, there would be an element of independence and self-discipline among our students. And those students have not developed, developed independence and self-discipline. I think parents will now realize that they need to train their, their kids, their children, 
uh, to become independent learners because they cannot over-rely right now with their teachers. Alam nga naman ng mga magulang na every now, every minute, ano po ang gagawin ko sa mga magulang? Hindi na po ganun. So, uh, uh, ma- parents will also be forced to make their kids become independent and they will now realize na hindi lang pala si teacher dapat ang sinisisi ko sa mga sa mga pagkakamali ng mga anak ko yung yung mga pag, yung mga pagbagsak ng anak ko nare-realize ko ngayon dito pala may problema din pala ang anak kasi walang disiplina hmm. i think that's one good good thing about about the online offline in distance education parents get to see the real behavior of their children in the learning process All right, so these are now the disadvantages of online lectures. Number one, let us be honest, teachers. Lahat po nagsimula na po ng klase, let us all be honest. It requires more time for preparation. Oh my gosh. Well, at first, uh, right now, um, I think I've got the hang of it and I already know what I want, but then again, I'm always pushing myself to the limit. So every now and then, binabago ko po yung aking way of presentation every month. So um, the point here is that f- for the first time in forever, ay, ano pala yun? Uh, ano pala yun sa, ano, sa, sa movie? For the first time uh, <clears throat> that you're going to prepare for the online, it, it would definitely be, be uh, arduous, tasking, stressful, because we're still getting getting the hang of it. But once we get the hang of it and the pattern becomes habitual and the habits become part of what we do every day in our lives, in our career, then it becomes simple. Ganun lang po, ganun lang naman talaga yun eh. Sa simula mahirap, pero habang tumatagal, sige lang po. So when you feel like you're, you're giving up of doing online lectures, don't. Just continue. And then you will realize that, ah, kung ipupush ko pa lang pala sarili ko, mas naging creative ko. That's true. As For as long as you keep on pushing yourself, you become more creative and you get to realize that you get to use digital platforms in a whole new way that you have not realized that it can be used as such. Next, requires good time management and creates a sense of isolation. Yun lang po. Kailangan mo lang... Uh, one of the disadvantages of, 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 of online lectures is that sa bahay, halimbawa, meron akong schedule sa umaga, ang kalaban ko niyan ay um, tikilaw. Kaya kanina, ang ingay ng manok dito, yung aso doon, daan-daan ng mga tao. I think di naman narinig yung mga Uh, pero, but it's still distracting for me was doing online. And, and sometimes when I get distracted, things that I'm supposed to say just flew out of, flew out of the window and, and I'm, I'm now grasping for what am I supposed to say now? Oh. Such distractions um, creates the feeling of isolation. It makes me feel like parang ako lang ang nagsasakripisyo. Uh, uh, just being honest with you na, Uh, there would come a time na feeling ng teacher na na, na nag-iisa siya sa ginagawa, especially sa bahay, kung siya lang ang teacher, ang mga asawa niya hindi naman teacher, sa mga anak niya ay, ay nag-aaral. Parang siya lang talagang hirap na hirap, especially na, na kung nasa bahay siya, tapos meron pang household chores. Hindi niya alam kung paano niya i-manage ang, ang, pag, ang household chores sa school lang umaya. Kasi unlike kung nasa office ka, you can always just you know focus on work. But at home kasi... There, there's difficulty of shutting down your senses uh, towards all other responsibilities that you hear in, at home or in your communities. Good news. Science about struggles from that. It's online. <laughs> Another one would be the last one uh, based on research again. It requires technology and know how and access to good connection. Um, I did. I, I did. Um, Every now and then I will ask uh, uh, the people from the Belt to orient me, help me with how I'm supposed to go over the use of certain platforms. Like right now I'm exploring Microsoft Teams, I'm exploring um, other platforms and online platforms. But nonetheless, um, by exploring all of this, we get to have the know. But again, it, we need time for it. 
and 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 especially if it's already starting and we have already lots of responsibilities and schedules uh, lined for us, and it's rather difficult for us to uh, to learn others. So sometimes we get stuck with what we already know. Hence, hence disadvantage nga siya. It requires technology know-how. If we want to improve, kailangan natin talaga aralin. Kung gusto natin gumamit ng application, kailangan natin talaga aralin. So it's either, it's either you want to improve, sacrifice some of your time, and then go for it, or you stay what you're good at at the moment, and then once you have uh, you found time, and then you got the hang of it, dun na lang, dun ka na lang mag-improve. Either way, um, you can still get away from this as a dis- uh, as an advantage. Take this out as a disadvantage by, you know, realizing that you can still do something about it. Improve your your improve your craft by you know finding time to explore all other available online platforms or digital platforms to improve our online lectures. Okay. So let's now proceed to the last question of the day. And the question is, what are ways to improve and make lectures more active? This is my, my the way I would share how we can make uh, our lectures more active. <clears throat> so I divided this into Three parts. Oh my gosh, sir. Question number four, three parts ka ba? Ang haba pala niyan. Wait lang. Matatapos din tayo. Ikaw talaga nagmamadali ka eh. Okay, so I divided this into three parts. That we preparation during lecture and after lecture. Ayun okay, naman eh. Sobra-sobra naman kayo. Sa preparation po, ito dapat ang gagawin natin. Which I usually do. Create a comfortable, non-threatening environment. Be it offline or online. Pero I would highly suggest for online. Like, kagaya ngayon, may pahalaman po si mayor ngayon. Though such kind of, such element in the background. Tapos may mga, panwaring ko mga blemish, blemish dun makes the environment, my background, more appealing. Para sa akin lang, ha, sabi nila, sir, maganda na may element. Padagdag ng padagdag yan later on. But the point there is that because it's online, dapat may, we, we, we come up with certain effort as well to improve the online environment, like our background, the way we look. Wala na akong magawa sa look. Ganyan na talaga. Yan po ginawa ni Lord. Wala na tayong magawa doon. But at least the background, we can do something about it. The, the, the shirt that we wear and so on and so forth. Okay. Powder a little to make our countenance a little pleasing, but uh, the background for me is more important to make it more interesting for our students. Plus, the visual aids. One of also of the, the environment that we create for online would be the visual aids that we have that support what we are trying to say. Okay. Now, for offline, uh, what we can do is uh, same. Kailang pre-recorded na lang siya. So, ito, pwede yung ginawa ko ito, pero record, record, pre-recorded siya at pinadala sa bata. Okay? Next to be in corporate visuals, um, dati kasi, puro lang ako still pictures and then graphics and graphic organizers. So, as I, as I improve in my presentation and my lecture, I integrated uh, uh, graphics, uh, graphical, uh, graphic organizers, still pictures, and G- GP. So uh, animated animated pictures. Um, by doing that, it's it's I engage. I get to be interested of doing it, and then and, and I present it in such a way that there's comprehensibility and balance between visual and verbal elements in my presentation. But it should be to support what I'm trying to say. It should not be too verbose in a sense that what's written. Uh, what's written on or what's shown in my in my presentation are exactly what I'm saying. Hindi dapat. Dapat mga cues siya kung ano sasabihin po natin. Next, reset the attention clock. Include opportunities for active learning. Like what I'm doing right now, I'm modeling uh, I'm modeling like think aloud and I do not filter a lot. Like, pag nagkamali ako, hayaan na kasi it makes the students feel like it's real, that it's active, na face-to-face pa rin interaction. Unlike for or pag nakita ng bata sa recorded, kasi pwedeng ikat ni teacher, i- i- reshoot niya ulit yung part na hindi niya nagustuhan. Pag online kasi, it's more natural, it's it's spontaneous, na to heck with with my errors. 
it's but normal. I may have mispronounced certain words, but it's okay. I'm aware of that. And the pe you people out there are aware of that, but it's inconsequential of the information that I'm trying to provide for you and what I'm trying to, how and the, the information that I'm trying to share. Sometimes I stumble over my pronunciation that magdaldal ka ba naman ng ilang minuto mula kayo na umaga, it really hurts. Next, organized lecture with a clear structure and signposts. This is what I do. Like, meron po akong uh, 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 like discussion. Meron palagi signposts of, to give me and to my viewers out there as a cue, ano na ang susunod na activity? Ano ang susunod na gagawin ni sir? Okay? Don't worry by next month, this next week, magkakaroon tayo ng konting uh, interactivity. Although most of the responsibilities would be mine. Ako magdadrama dito sa harap ninyo. But nonetheless, mag-analyze pa rin kayo. I hope you would. Alright? So, yung pagkakaroon po ng flow. Kung anong flow mo, may mga signposts ka. May, meron kang uh, uh, transitions. Uh, that would be also a way of helping our viewers see that there's now uh, a, a smooth transitioning from one topic to another. Okay? And finally, prepare notes that will serve as a roadmap rather than a script. To be honest, I have also a handout format of my presentation before I start my PowerPoint presentation. I have already a flow of what I'm going to say and then I, I try to digest what information, what statements, what information are are only essential for me to present during my presentation. All other rest are just for my uh, verbal explanation. So roadmap. So lahat ng nilalagay ko sa akin power presentations are kind of like cue cards for me, for me to be reminded of what I'm supposed to say. Sometimes it's, if it's spontaneous, I get to forget. Uh, we have to admit teachers that um, we're not getting older. I think that's wrong. We're not getting any younger. Ang tayo bata. We're not getting any younger, and therefore, we cannot over-rely on our memory. Hence, we need certain memory cues like our PowerPoint, the way they are, they are organized, signposts, questions. Kaya mahilig po ako sa questions kasi na naayos po yung aking pag-iisip, the way I will deliver it. Again, that's how I am and how I do it. You, you, come, you explore how you're going to de de deliver yours. Now, if you think the way I deliver it with question answer, with this kind of presentation uh, works for you, well, then by all means, make it your own. I, it's not mine anyway. I just explored it. Okay. Next would be during lecture. So during lecture, ito, ginagawa natin. Make your, make, uh, uh, make your students feel that you're interacting with them. Di ba yung, yung gumaganon ka na, ikaw talaga, no, it's you make them feel that you're actually talking directly to them, even if you're not seeing them face to face. Ako para akong tanga dito, nakatingin lang sa kamera, feeling that I'm really talking to you, but I feel like you are there. Are you there or am I seeing things? Joke lang yun. Matay na ulit ang joke ko ngayon. Okay, next, show passion for the subject. I think one of the things that makes online lecture and well offline online lecture makes more interesting for our students is that our passion for the subject like i think uh, people get engaged in my presentation i think lang naman po eh, I'm, I'm, i think i'm being too presumptuous but i think these are some few of the comments of the people who've been messaging me uh, private uh, giving me private messages that sir kasi para ka nagipag-usap lang para kang kaharap ko lang uh, that because and, and and when you talk about those topics you get too animated and he, we feel that you love what you're doing. Yes, I do love what I'm doing. And, and, and I, I do thank God for giving me a profession that, that I love doing, but at the same time, it's, it's my source of, of income and it's my career. So could I ask for more? Next, provide students a clear sense of these topics and their re relation to the learning of the subject as a whole. Yung unang ginagawa ko, di ba meron na akong outline that makes you feel na ano, ba tapa, ano mangyayari sa buong session na yun. So the outline or, or, or an overview of what the students will learn is very important. So dapat ibibigyan po tayo. Palagi po meron pong overview, palagi po nag-lecture tayo sa mga bata. And then a little bit of summary. The way I do it, I have an introduction. And then at the end, I have, you know, a conclusion and summary that, you know, wraps up, makes students feel that there was, uh, there was um, a completeness of the, of the lecture. Next is use gestures, eye contact. 
and movement around the room. Oh, naman ang movement around the room kasi ang hirap. Unless mayroong camera nagsusunod-sunod sa akin. Next time po, pag naayos ko na, nakabili na pa ako ng ng ring light with, um, with cell phone holder tapos meron pa po dito, bibili pa ako ng isa dito para nakakaganong-ganon ako para makartista ang dati na maraming anggolo. But I'm still working on my angles. Okay? Um, that's very interesting too. By, by doing facial expressions and your gestures, it comes out so natural. Finally, we have demonstrate respect for an interest in student ideas and questions like have time to entertain questions from students like what I'm doing right now. Uh, after this, we will have an open forum by making you, by, by, by entertaining your questions. It's, it's a way of making your lectures online. So offline kasi hindi mo gagawa yun ngayon. Yun ang, yun ang hindi maganda. And yun ang one of the disadvantages. Hindi nagkakaroon ng interactive uh, interaction between the teacher. So offline. But in the online, uh, you can have uh, a session, a part of your online lecture where you allow students to ask questions and then you answer those questions, like an open forum. Now, after lecture, I would just give you three things. Rethink. Did I, was my way of delivering it good? What about the feedback from my teacher, from my students? Were they okay? Should I consider some aspects that I need to redo? Kagaya uh, po ng technical problem ko po na nagkaroon po ako ng problema, nagahang na po ang aking PowerPoint dahil sa sobrang graphics ko. Okay, na sobra na ako ng graphics. So ngayon, binawasan ko na ng mga GF, uh, binawasan ko. So may mga still pictures na ako, tapos binawasan ko ng mga animations kahit pa paano. Bawas na yan po. Pintinan ko po yung kanyang, ano, ban, ang kanyang, ang kanyang heaviness ng file. So rethink. Uh, like like anal analyzing was I good was what's something I need to to look into what I need to improve on was my delivery right uh, was my visual aid uh, too much for the students that it distracts them from my from my explanation I think getting feedback from the students is one good way of knowing how we can rethink our presentation our lecture next we tool so we think of other ways to deliver our goods. It could be incorporating audio files, incorporating video files, which I'm already doing, but we cannot do that here because of copyright, uh, copyright uh, problems. So what I can do is, let the drama na lang ako dito. Next is revise. Uh, the next time you, you create your presentation, that's when you do revise. Like one of the many questions that sir, pwede po bang palakihin ang, ang fonts the next time? So we do revise. Uh, Tapos, bago ako mag-present ko, bago ako mag-present talaga, ano nag-ano muna ako nag-run through para mali-revise ko kung tama ba yung order ng transitions. So, I, I do that. By doing that, we're able to uh, help our help ourselves become better at our lectures and it becomes more interesting not only for, for the students, but it becomes more interesting to us. And we have to admit, and I have to admit that as I do this uh, uh, every day, every week, um, I get to be interested in doing more and exploring other possibilities of, of improving my lectures, okay? So these are the things I would like to share to you, the classroom flipping as a way of improving classroom lectures too. So one way of doing classroom, one, one doing class, uh, uh, classroom flipping is called the standard inverted classroom. How do you do this? So students are assigned the homework of watching video lectures that is offline and reading and materials relevant to the next day's class offline. During class time, this is online now, students practice what they've learned through a traditional schoolwork with their teachers freed for additional one-on-one -on -one time. So at the end, this is a combination of offline na unang babasahin ng mga bata, mga modules, tapos panonoorin yung mga pre-record videos na pinadala sa kanila, and then during online, scheduled online, doon ipapractice na ngayon, tutulungan ng teacher na i-practice lahat ng kanilang naintindihan, at doon makikita ng teacher kung gaano kalalim ang pagkakaintindi ng kanilang materialist na independent na binasa ng bata. This is called the standard inverted classroom. Another one is discussion-oriented flipped classroom. Teachers assign lecture videos as well as another video or reading related to today's subject think TED Talks, and then YouTube videos and other resources. Ang mangyayari po dito na yung input ng, yung input ng teacher 
ay uh, this is more of uh, of uh, online online may upload ng teachers sa uh, Facebook or TED Talk or YouTube tapos doon titingnan ng bata i-redirect nakalagay sa uh, modules ng bata kung ano ang link para panoorin ng bata okay The other one is demonstration focused flip classroom. Uh, in this mo- in this model, the teacher uses screen recording software to demonstrate the activity in a way that allows students to follow along on, at their own pace. It could be offline or online. Ang ginagawa dito, especially for skills like sa TLE, sa mathematics, yung way of solving problems, for experimentation in science, uh, pre-recorded pong ginagawa ng teacher para ma-record ang steps para gagayahin ng mga bata sa kanilang mga bahay. It could be uploaded as an off as an online material uh, which they were up, which they are going to un, uh, download or it could be the, given to the students as an offline lecture or offline material that it's dated and based on a schedule given to them. Yun doon nila bubuksan plus activity sheets. All right. And with that, I'm now um, I'm now ready to entertain questions. Thank you very much for reminding me. It's already 3.15. Yes, I'm now ready for uh, to entertain questions and clarifications from uh, the viewers, out, from, our, from our viewers out there. Thank you very much, Brother Ricky. So our first question is from Mr. Edward Noda. What are good activities for synchronous class that doesn't require much of a data? Here in Manila, We need to consider the monthly data allocation of students for only 10 gig per month. Um, I would suggest that um, uh, that you can do offline lectures pre-recorded. Yung mga ano po, di ba sa inyong lesson po, meron pong nakalagay doon ng mga input information that students should know or babasahin po nila or sa mga libro natin dati na may mga babasahin sila. Pwede po ang gawin po ninyo ay yun po ang gawan nyo po ng lectures. Or kung hindi po lectures naman po, ito po ay mga YouTube, uh, especially for classes naman, hindi naman po yung mga, hindi, kung, kung, personal use, pan, kung personal use naman yung po yun ng mga, ng mga bata, pwede nyo pong i-download ang mga videos nito, especially for Khan Academy, from Khan Academy, from from YouTube. Tapos, yun ang ibibigay mo sa bata as offline as offline materials, pero nakaschedule, nakalagay nga lang, merong scan listahan nga lang, parang syllabus, listahan pa kung itong date na to, anong panonoorin nila, anong activity sheet. So, mayroon pa rin po kayong syllabus sa susundin. Um, yan po yung sinasabi ko kanina na mas importante po na nagawan na po ninyo ng offline lectures yung mga input. Kasi nga, it replaces the online. Uh, just in case po, why, why kailangan ko gawin, bakit kailangan natin gawin na offline? Kasi there's a possibility during online, magkaroon ng interruption ang connection ng bata. Or sa gikaligitnaan ng lecture na, na naputol ang bata, paano niya babalikan yung online lecture kung, kung wala namang recorded nun? So I would suggest that all the lectures will be delivered online must have pre-recorded. Uh, pre-recorded. Kasi pwede rin gawa naman ng teacher na during online, yung pre-recorded video niya, yun di papanoorin ng mga bata. So double purpose po ang, ang offline materials sa ginagawa natin. It can be used as offline lectures delivered to the students uh, via flash drive or US uh, flash drive or a CD, or it could be uploaded, used as an online material. Double purpose to siya. So I would go for pre-recorded, especially for teachers that uh, are very conscious about their spontaneity. So I would go for recording. Mas okay po po yan. Uh, you can edit for errors, you can edit for mistakes. Oh, kasi I'm not, I'm not so conscious about my errors and my mistakes. Uh, to me, that's, that's part of... of Um, a natural natural way of delivering information but sana hindi po conceptual errors kung kagaya po sa akin na mis- mispronunciations tapos yung mga nakagat ko dila ko uh, ang accent ko well anyway those are just what we call as superficial errors pero kung ang tawag po natin ay conceptual error nako mali, mali po ang matutunan ng bata so might as well go for offline lecture recordings yung mga input po sa mga modules niyo yung pang gawa ninyo ng lecture uh, pre-recorded po Tapos, you can use it either for offline or online lectures, sessions. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Next one is from Miss Christine Salve Manal. Question po, is it okay if we include our students in making our online or offline activities? 
for example, in English po, we can assign a certain students to share a word for the day. Opo. Uh, that can also be done as kailan po ang mangyayari po niyan po, dapat kasama po yan sa orientation. Uh, I had a session on that that uh, during orientation, preparing the mindset, uh, session, week webinars po natin na dapat pag may ganun po tayong activity, hindi dapat siya bigla na lang siyang lalabas kasi mahirap sa distance education na bigla na lang lalabas, uh, mahirap ang preparation ng mga bata. Dapat during the orientation, sinabi niyo na sa mga bata na during starting this coming month, magkakaroon na po ng assignment ng sharing of the word or sharing an article, especially for the higher grade levels. Pwede pong gawin nun. Pero ang gagawin ng mga bata ay pre-recorded tapos i-play lang nila. Pwede po din yun. It could be done as an offline and online materials. Your idea is brilliant. It makes the the online lectures or the offline lectures more interactive. And at that point, it makes our students more active. And especially for the language subjects, mas makikita po ang, 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 ang application ng, ng tinuturo natin sa, sa mga bata, especially on the oral aspects of the language. Uh, makikita natin na napapractice ng mga bata. They can up, maganda nga kung ang gagawin pa natin ay i-upload ng bata kung may mga Facebook sila, yun ang, gamitin, yun ang platform nila na word of the day. So we're going today, we're going to visit the, the, the Facebook wall of blah, blah, blah because it's her time to post on her Facebook the word of the day. And we're going to to Mr. Blank's uh, IG to let's to see um, the statement of the day. Parang ganun. Kung meron kayo ganun. So pwede po natin gamitin ng mga online platforms. Integrate po natin sa ating online lectures or offline lectures. That would be interesting. Good idea, ma'am. That's good. Yes, I would say yes. Go for it. Okay, po. Thank you, Brother Ricky. And for the last question is from Mr. Reynold Briones. Do you think, po, Brother Ricky, that online learning will work better than in face-to-face -face learning? Uh, if you want my honest answer, we are actually in uncharted waters at the moment. This is our first time in the Philippines to do that, but not my first time to do it. It will work well for, for students who have a certain level of independence and, and, and certain of self-management and study habits. But for students and of course, literacy level, that they are readers, independent readers, but for students that, um, especially for kinder to grade three, that's a huge problem. Uh, modeling is very important. And also for the higher grade levels where students are still non-decoders who are struggle, struggling with their literacy. And for students who have problems with the content, like students who have problems with mathematics, who don't like mathematics, students who don't like science doing experimentation, I think it will cultivate a lot of, of, of laziness among our students without, if there is no active support from our parents, uh, it, will, it will be an utter failure. Our distance education in the Philippines will be an utter failure without the support of the parents. Kasi sa mangyayari pong ito, the parents become the the pseudo teachers at home. Kasi wala naman si teacher doon. Uh, the challenge there would be, paano matatransfer ng alam ng teacher sa content? Pa, ma, paano ma, pa, paano ma, maituturo ng teacher ang content knowledge niya sa parents para sila ang magiging support sa mga pag-aaral pagkatuto ng bata sa bahay? That's the challenge. And if you're not able to do that, if not able to make the parents actively uh, partners and be involved in the learning process and orienting them and, 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 and making them uh, also experts of, our, of what we have been experts of, I would say it's going to be a failure and we will have a generation of students who one would be poor in literacy, poor in content, poor in communication. So lahat na lang magpupur po, bababa po tayo. So kung extend pa natin for another year, it will get, it will get worse. 
So, yun lang po ang nakikita kong solusyon na para mag, mag-work po ito. Kung makakatulong po din po ang local government, ang local radios po para mga nakapag-support po sa education, it cannot be just the sole responsibility of the teachers. We can only do so much. Our budget, our 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 available our ability to connect with the parents and our ability to 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 do so much for the welfare of the learning welfare of our students is just limited to what we can do at home and at school outside that it becomes now the responsibility of the community and i would say that if uh the local government like the mayor or the congressman or even the the president uh does not real do not realize Uh, this uh, this crucial uh, role, the crucial role of parents in making the distance education a success, then wala po talaga. Kawawa po. Parang gagawin po, sige, mag-distance education lang tayo for the sake of, you know, fulfilling the school year. Pero hindi naging effective. Sana ma-realize po ng gobyerno na maggawa sila ng mga training para sa mga magulang, mag-alat sila ng budget, kaysa kaysa magbigay po ng maraming po anong kung saan ang mga projects na stop muna yung build-build na yan. Focus muna tayo sa education. Ang gawin muna ay supportahan. Magbigay ng mga training sa mga magulang para tumas ang literacy. Anong gagawin? O kaya mag-create ng mga para-teachers within the community. Ang mga magulang na you know, wala namang trabaho. Tapos mga chismosa. Ay, sorry. Hindi pala chismosa. Ang politically correct term for chismosa ay uh, concerned citizens. Pa- para sa mga 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 nanay, tatay doon na wala naman trabaho sa bahay, they are homemakers, not home wreckers, homemakers, that they are uh, highly uh, uh, concerned citizens. Pwede po natin silang enlist na uh, uh, yung kanilang passion to, passion po nila na makialam sa buhay na bang tao. O di ito, isama natin sila, maging para or solo teachers po sila in the community. So mga barangay na safe-safe sila o kaya mga ng, ng div, subdivision, it becomes now an, an initiative of the community to support the education. Pero hindi dapat ang education ang nagdikita sa komunidad. Dapat ang komunidad ang makarealize noon para makatulong sa education. Hanggat hindi po natin, hanggat hindi nakikita ng komunidad yun at they're still having this you know, blind reliance and dependence to the teachers at as later on, this is ng teachers, that won't work. I'm sorry, but that's my honest answer. Thank you for Brother Ricky. That's all the questions that we have for now. Any last reminders to our viewers for today, Paul? Thank you very much. I would just say it's last reminders. And again, I would like to say thank God it's Friday for you guys, but my work still continues on to Sunday. All right, so I would like us just to, be rem- to remember these 10 tips. Remember that lecturing is not well suited for higher levels of learning. Why? Because dapat pagdating na ng bata sa senior high school sa college, nagdi-diminish na po ang lecture. Bakit po nagdi-diminish na po ang lecture? Dahil dapat ang mga bata, they're becoming more de- independent learners. Na they're not becoming reliant, uh, overly reliant on the teacher's input. So habang tumatagal, bumababa po o lumili po ang porsyento ng lecture ng teacher. So mangyayari po dapat ang mga bata na po ang nagbibigay ng input. So I would have to say there are more reporting Uh, student uh, input in the higher grade levels as opposed to the lower grade levels. Next would be decide what you want the students to know and be able to do as a result of the lecture. So be focused. Uh, to make the, the, the lecture more purposive, more explicit, just focus on what students need to know, especially for online. Limit your topics to you know, uh, digestible, digestible uh, chunks of information. Next, outline your lecture and share that outline with your students. You can go up on the outline, but claro sa utak nila kung ano yung pataas mo sunod. And next, choose relevant concrete examples. I think one of the many things that makes your lecture more relevant and more relatable uh, is uh, would be the examples that you use. So it's for us to know what the students are experiencing right now. Kagaya ako po, I had to learn to play ML. Kasi para malaman ko anong experience yun. Ah, kaya pala nagkakalit yung mga bata dahil dito. So if I could use this platform to uh, my online lectures as an example, pwede po naman pala. All right? Find out about the students, their backgrounds, and their goals. So 
uh, profiling po. Uh, I've been I've been advocating profiling, student profiling for us to, you know, be able to uh, prepare more relevant lectures to our students. Number six, permit students to stop you, okay? To ask questions and make comments or ask for review. I think that's quite clear, uh, especially for online. It can be done for online lectures. Uh, we, can, we can always have, say, a certain point where students will allow, or you can ask students if you have questions and clarifications while I'm discussing and you think you need to be clarified because you cannot uh, uh, get along with the lecture. So you can, you know, click the hands up button. Interpers periodic summary. So every now and then, kagaya na ginagawa every question, meron na kong answer, tas I summarize it. So ganun po ang gagawin natin sa lectures online. Medyo uh, uh, parang an end in itself. Pero connectado pa rin siya. Start with a question, problem, or current event. So pwede kang question format ang ginagawa ko, or problema kagaya na ginagawa ko sa contextualization or sa aking myth busting, and then current event. Siguro kay gawin ko yan ng current. Mahirap kasi yung current events sa online lecture kasi um, minsan hindi nag-connect sa atin. Pero hanggang questions sa problem lang kaya kong integrate. Next, watch watch the students. If you think they don't understand you, stop and ask them questions like, um, alam ko naman sa pag nag-online lecture kayo, nakikita niyo mga faces ng mga bata. Yun ay kung magandang connection talaga. Nangyari na sa akin, nagtahang talaga. Kaya pinatanggal ko yung mga videos sila para hindi ko makain ng bandwidth. Pero... Mas maganda kasi nakikita niyo ang facial expressions ng mga bata kasi by that, at least one way or the other, you are able to gauge whether they're getting it or not or they're having difficulty or it's get, they're getting the idea. And finally, use active learning techniques, the one that I shared to you, like having visual aids, uh, balancing verb uh, words with pictures, and then having signposts. So with that, I think you can uh, improve uh, your lectures online or offline. And um, I hope that you have some takeaways uh, in making your online and offline lectures uh, better as you, as you move along with the school year, as you progress in the school year. And I hope some of these steps would, would help, would guide you in, in this improvement process. With that, thank you very much. Good afternoon. And I'm happy to give you the last topic for this week. And next week, we're going to start a whole new topic in, in, in tribute to all teachers. And just, you know, just stay tuned and let us know if uh, my way, uh, our way of presenting a new, uh, the, the, our new webinar, my presentation will be quite interesting for you. So we do value your comments and your feedback. And we consider that in our improvement of our delivery of our webinars. With that, thank you very much. And I hope to see you next week. There we have it. In behalf of Ball Group Incorporated, I would like to thank you, Brother Ricky, for be, being our speaker this afternoon for this insightful and inspiring learning session. It is truly an honor to have you with us today, Brother. And to all our work of Evolve viewers, all thanks to you for your continuous patronage to our daily learning session. We encourage you to subscribe and watch on our official Facebook and YouTube channel. Muli maraming salamat at magandang araw po sa ating lahat. learning session. It is truly an honor to have you with us today, brother. And to all our work of Evolve viewers, all thanks to you for your continuous patronage to our daily learning session. We encourage you to subscribe and watch on our official Facebook and YouTube channel. Muli maraming salamat at magandang araw po sa ating lahat.